we're moving on now to the law of sines. Now the law of sines can be used for any triangle. That means we could use it for right triangles and oblique triangles. Now oblique triangles by definition are triangles with no right angles. Remember when we're dealing with right triangles, in addition to the law of sines, we have Sokotoa. So when I say sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent, I'm referring to a triangle with a right angle. So when I say Sokotoa, I'm referring to right triangle trig. For any triangle, the law of sines will work, be it right or oblique. Now, with any triangle, we generally set it up like this. Angle A is capital A, and it's across from side A, which is a small a, lowercase a. Angle B is a capital B. Across from angle B, we'll find side B, which is a lowercase letter. And capital C designates angle C, where across from that big angle C, we see small letter or lowercase letter C. Now there is a side angle relationship. The bigger the angle, the bigger the side across from it. The bigger the angle, the bigger the side across from it. The bigger the angle, the bigger the side across from it. That goes for smaller too. So we'll see the biggest side across from the biggest angle and the smallest side across from the smallest angle, for example. So here is the law of sines. I've drawn an oblique triangle. This could be a right triangle as well. It doesn't matter. The point is you can use the law of sines on any triangle, but Sokotoa only works on right triangles. So here it is. Any triangle could be right, could be oblique. Side A over sine of angle A is equal to side B over sine of angle B equals side C over sine of angle C. So that's a fine way to represent the law of sines. If I take the reciprocal of this fraction and this fraction and this fraction, I get sine of angle A over side A equals sine of angle B over side B equals sine of angle C over side C. Either one works. You've got to keep your signs in the numerator all the way across or your signs in the denominator all the way across. But either way, sometimes it's more helpful to use this. Sometimes it's more helpful to use this. Either way works. When do you use it? Well, here are the official rules. When you have two angles and any side, so angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle. Remember from geometry, we're talking about angle, angle, side. You have to be given angle, angle, and side, or angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle, for example. Or when you're given two angles and any side opposite one of them, so side, side, angle, side, side, and then this angle, A, for example. That seems like a lot to remember for me. I always think about three out of four. If I'm gonna use this part of the law of sines, then I'm setting up a proportion. I better know, for example, B and C and angle C if I wanna find angle B. So I just look at what I'm given. I say, am I given three out of four? For example, if I wanted to use this part of the law of sines, that's generally what we do. We take one section of it like this. And if I'm given angle A and angle B and side A, then I could solve for the one unknown. So I think to myself, three out of four. And that sort of supersedes all of these rules. And I don't have to remember the rules. I just look at my formula and say, do I have enough information to use the law of sines? By the way, let's say we were going after this angle B. Remember that angle B would equal inverse sine of some ratio, I'll just call R. Now, remember that for inverse sine, we have restrictions. This is the dark side of the moon. And we are only allowed from negative pi over two to pi over two. Well, we're not gonna have negative angles in this triangle, right? So essentially, we're restricted to quadrant one, which if I switched, if I'm doing radians, would be zero to pi over two radians, or zero degrees to 90 degrees. In other words, if you're gonna use the law of sines to find the angle, don't go after the biggest angle because it might be obtuse. And you can see that the law of sines cannot handle an obtuse angle. So go after the smallest angle with the law of sines because the law of sines relying on inverse sine cannot handle an obtuse angle. How do you avoid that? Always save the biggest angle for last and don't go after it using law of sines.